Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. This time we're continuing with our video series on Murasaki. Murasaki is a novel that is a shared universe anthology. It is made up of six short stories, each written by a different author. I have made videos on the first three short stories, which are The Treasures of Chujo by Frederick Paul, World's Fast, World's Various by Gregory Benford, and Genshi by David Brin. Now this short story, which is the fourth, is called A Plague of Conscience, and it was written by Greg Bear. Now the stories all take place within a double planet system that is in the star system that is known as Murasaki, but in reality is called Jalice 205 or HD 36395. Now the double planets in this story are Genshi and Shujo. Genshi is a super earth that is 2.8 times the mass of earth and 1.36 times the diameter. Okay, and it's also, it has 1.5 times Earth's gravity. And Shujo, which is a smaller one, is slightly smaller than Earth at 0.76 Earth masses. So Shujo orbits Genshi at 40% closer than the moon does Earth. So let's get into the story. This story takes place about four years after the last story. Edward Philby, who is the first planet fall coordinator of the multinational starship Lorenz is on Shujo speaking with Kama. Kama, who has survived for the past 10 years on Shujo, thanks to the shaman of the Shujuans, is alive because of a mat of vegetation that has encrusted most of his body. Philby is trying to find out from Kama if he knows where Kano is. Kano is the leader of the Qantas who believe that Jesus is a physicist and will one day come into the system to lead the people of Shujo and Genshi. They arrived in the system just ahead of the British-led multinational expedition and once they got to Shujo, apparently an unknown plague broke out killing 90% of their crew and dozens of Japanese. Only Kano and 20 of his crewmates survive. That and the fact that they found Kama alive have strengthened their religious faith. As Philby heads back to his ship, we find out that the multinational expedition has taken it upon themselves to stop Kano from converting the natives. Meanwhile on Genshi, Robert Carno is with the Ayadizu and he is helping them complete a temple. Carno is not only responsible for bringing a new religion to the Iridizu, he is also responsible for turning Kama into a religious figure based on the bonding between human and Shijuan. Carno goes back to his ship. He is then contacted by Tatsumi who is on Philby's ship and she is trying to mediate between Philby's group and Kano's group. Kano refuses the Japanese attempt at mediation. It turns out that Kano and 20 of his people were able to survive the plague because when Kama hit him with his stick, some of the snug rug that was surrounding his body was on the stick and it got transferred to Kano who used it to heal the rest of his people. Some of the Iridizu have become convinced by Kano because they too have a legend that an angel came down and hit their females with a staff which gave the females greater strength and power. So some of those are following Kano but he is now meeting groups of Iridizu that are not joining him and each of those groups that have refused him were visited by Philby. Philby receives a message from the spacer ship that left Kama about 10 years ago and once he received that message he goes and looks for Kama. On Shujo he meets with Kama and tries to convince him to come back to the ship with him and 
Then the Shijuan shamans examine Kama, and then Kama tells Philby that he was an experiment and that the shamans were finished with him so he can go with him. At the same time, Kano agrees to meet with Philby with the Japanese acting as mediators. They decide to have the meeting on Genshi and Kama would be there with them. An examination of Kama make them realize that the experiments that was done on him will allow him to survive in the heavy gravity of Genshi. It is also obvious that Kama knows more than he is telling them. Kama meets Kano and they walk down to the ocean where the Iridizu has some whaling ships and when Kama sees the extent of the whaling ships work he gets upset and he says they are the ones and they're killing them at which point the Iridizu say that they must kill the judges referring to Kano and Kama and they attack them Kano is killed and Kama disappears. When Philby examines the recording of what happened, he sees when Kano is killed and he sees what he thinks is Kama going out into the ocean. And he thinks about what Kama said. The last words were, they're the ones, they're the ones and you're killing them. And that's how the story ends. Well, that's it for now. There are two more short stories left in this novel that will be coming up soon. I would like to thank you for watching and listening. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and giving us a thumbs up and hitting the notification bell. And I will see you in the next video.